Oh, this is beautiful. So now you are uh, taking that ultimately, whatever be the, you could say the intellectual authority of Prabhupada's statements, you can take it from a different perspective that is taking those statements the way we are taking them, uh, going to help us grow spiritually. So it's not just help Prabhupada's mission grow, but also help us grow. So if you use those statements to become, say, if that makes us less, uh, less compassionate, because makes us heartless to the pain of others, yes, then ah, we are... Now you have. Now you have. You know, remember that story in the Krishna book when Krishna was pretending to have a headache and he says, only the dust from the feet of my devotees will cure my headache. So his messenger goes to the Shastric Brahmins, you know, and they say, uh, oh, we cannot do put our the dust of our feet on Krishna's head. We'll go to hell. And the gopis immediately give the dust, you know, aren't you afraid to go to hell? We'll go, so we'll go to hell. I don't care. Take it. And the, the, the Brahmins realize our knowledge is, is condemned. It's useless because we don't have the love that uh, our wives have for Krishna. So your knowledge, you may be able to quote a thousand Sanskrit verses. Your knowledge is condemned. It's hellish. If you have not developed compassion and love for all of God's parts and parcels, your knowledge is a, is a stumbling block on your spiritual path. To hell with your knowledge. Don't quote verses to me. Show me how big your heart is. Beautiful. So you are applying the principle of the gopis and the brahman patnis and their love for Krishna. You are expanding it to all living beings in relationship with Krishna also. That love for Krishna is not exclusive, it is inclusive. And uh, so if I, I love this point that, you know, maybe how many verses we quote will show how big our heart is, our head is. But it is how we act. It is... <laughs> But how we act will actually show how big our heart is. That's a profound point. So now, are you? If I just understand, let me understand your point clearly. So you are saying that if someone is encountering a statement of Prabhupada that as that has hurt them, then it is our compassion to help them, to help them, to help heal them from their wound. And to help them refocus on developing their relationship with Krishna. So, and if we if we insist on the absolute authority of those statements which they find hurtful, then we are actually being uncompassionate. Is that the point you're making? In this, sure. You know, you if your goal is to prove a point of view, I will. I am insistent on this point of view. This is the way it is. Well. Good, good luck to you, uh, and I wish you all success. I think of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, who went to see the Mayavadis and sat down where their shoes were. <laughs> he sat in the, in, the, in the most filthy place, most humble place, where they kept their shoes. And immediately won them over, just by his humility. Didn't he, he didn't have to say anything philosophically. Just, he, you know, he was so humble that they were all attracted to him. Look, I I don't know. Maybe I, I don't think I'm overly sentimental. I think this is a defensible point of view that, um, you know, the rules and regulations are there to guide us. But ultimately, you reach a point where you go past the literalism of Krishna consciousness, you go to the heart of Krishna consciousness. You know, the verse in Bhagavad Gita where Krishna tells Arjuna, Arjuna is quoting, you know, the Shastras say, you know, we have to do this and we, I cannot fight because it will cause distress. And this, <laughs> Krishna says, yeah, when your intelligence has passed out of the forest of ignorance, you'll become indifferent to all that. Wow, Prabhu, you are helping me see things that I have never seen in those light. So that verse, Yadate Moha Kalilam Buddhirvati Tarishati, Krishna says that the moha, the illusion is caused by the Vedas. 
So that itself is a radical that the Vedas can cause illusion. But now you are extending it further to say that sometimes even even Prabhupada's statements can cause illusion for us. So well, if you're too literal about them, and if you don't understand the spirit, if you if you don't go deeper into a, an understanding of the context, you know, context, context, context. Never forget the context. You can't understand Bhagavad Gita if you forget the context of two armies on a battlefield. 